thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. Never give up. Genesis 39.1 And Joshua was brought down uh, to Egypt, Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him off the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had bought, uh, brought him down hither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was prosperous. He was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did prosper in his hand. All of us have gone through a lot during our Christian life. I know I've been through it over the years. I've, you've told me and shared with me different things that each of you have you went through. Uh, you've had your ups and downs. And we get weary at times and simply just do not understand why things are going the way they do. And you pray so hard for God to intervene, intervene or help. We try to live the right life and nothing seems to be going right for us at times. And I want us to look at Joseph's life and what he went through. Because he went through the extreme. And I think if we can remember some of these things during the week, it can encourage us. The hard part is leaving here and remembering something. <laughs> and so you can apply it and use it. Because... My goal is to encourage you that when you leave here Monday through Friday, when you come back, you're excited about what took place. That when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because your God is with you. And I hope that this might encourage you today. Let's look at Joshua. I mean Joseph. I did that yesterday. Someone asked me, what are you preaching on tomorrow in Publix? And I said, Joshua. And he goes, yeah, what about him cross, uh, crossing the river? And I went, he didn't cross the river. And I went, Josh, Joshua, Joseph. <laughs> Anyhow, Joseph went through a lot, went through a lot of problems. His family called him a dreamer. His dream seemed to elevate him above his brothers. Just what he dreamed. He was always higher above them. And he didn't understand why. He didn't understand the, the dream. He would just tell them, don't, don't we come in during the week and say, hey, I had a bad dream or something happened. And we tell each other stories of what happened during the week or something we experienced or maybe a nightmare or, or whatever. Like last night I was dreaming of I was running a garage again. It's weird. And uh, I keep having those dreams every once in a while. And uh, Joseph was doing that. And Joseph tells his dreams, and because of it, his brothers hated him. Oh, you're dreaming. I mean, over a dream, they hated him. They didn't like him. Because, again, in his dreams, he was always ruling over his brothers. Even though he didn't quite understand it. And where he was, this, he didn't understand. You know how you don't remember the whole dream? You remember just bits and pieces of it? And his father like Joseph more than the rest of the, the boys to the point to where he ended up making him a special coat that was co called a coat of many colors. and uh, So they were envy, envious about that. That didn't help matters. Everything seemed to come down on Joseph as much as he kept trying. And think about how many times we try to do right ourselves. And I, I thought of work. You know, you may end up getting laid off when you're doing a great job for work. And I thought of my daughter. Uh, when she got a job uh, as a, I guess it was a bookkeeper. But anyhow, uh, and she was doing the, uh, the payroll and stuff like that. And uh, no one taught her how to do the, the program. She learned it all on herself. They were really impressed. A couple months later, uh, the boss walks in, or the owner walks in 
tells what a great job you're doing. And uh, during that time, they had a, a person they hired to evaluate the business and try to, you know, make more profit and all. And uh, he whips out, if I remember right, it was $500, I think it was. So when he gave her $500, just whipped out $500 cash and gave it to her. Said, I really appreciate what you're doing. This was the owner. And 30 days later, she gets laid off. Now, and he insured her at that time, he gave her the money that she had a job there. And you wonder, why? But the weirdest thing is, in less than 30 days, she gets another job with a big company that has four or 500 employees downtown Greenville. Same type of job. Would you believe they brought in, hired someone to come in and evaluate the company? Her boss was supposed to teach her the program. They didn't teach her. She learned the program on her by herself. To the point, people in other departments were coming in asking her questions and she was teaching them how to run it. The owner of that company came in with the supervisor and praised her and couldn't believe what she had accomplished on her own. A couple months later, she got laid off. Now, I think to myself, what would you think? No. I don't understand. I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to work hard for this company. And she would stay over and do things, take it home. She worked hard. And yet she got laid off. You work hard with the company and you don't get a raise when you, you know you should have, or at least a cost of living raise. Or maybe you missed out on a promotion at work when you knew you should have been the one to get it. And through all this, God is in control every moment as he did in Joseph's life. And we're going to look at Joseph's life just briefly. Joseph never stopped believing in God the whole time. Most commentators believe that Joseph was probably the closest of the family to God, of all his brothers and everybody. He was the closest to God. And his brothers almost kill him. They sell him to slavery and he ends up in a prison. And all this while he's doing right and trusting in God. Think about that a minute. He's doing everything he can. And nothing seems to be going his way. Or going right. Whenever everything fails in your life, never give up on God. Joseph didn't. Think about this. Joseph prospered wherever he was. And in Genesis uh, 39 2, it says, The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. All through that he went through, he prospered in those situations. Now, it doesn't talk about all of them, but it talks about that he did prosper. Now, think about uh, what he went through the journey. Now, I did everything, and I researched and researched this, and I couldn't find anybody to give me the information. But this is as close as I could get. Where they sold him and where he ended up was between two to 500 miles. Now, they don't give slaves horses to ride on or camels, so they walked it. Now, I'm figuring it had to take quite a few months, I don't know, maybe longer, to walk that length of time. A lot of it through the desert. So this wasn't a quick, you know, get in your car, go up, go up the thing, trip. When they sold him to slavery and they'd go take him to Egypt. And then they sold him. Now that's all. What did they do? Get off the, the uh, you know, pull him in, unlock him and put him on the thing and sold him right away? I doubt that happened. So he, this was, took a period, uh, it, it was a pretty good long period of time that he was a slavery. Yet never lost faith with the Lord during all that time. And then he ends up in prison. Now it does talk about the prison. He was in prison for two solid years. Two years in prison. And what did he do while he was in prison? He didn't give up on the Lord again. You know what he ended up doing? He elevated it to where he was the second in command of the guy who took care of the prison. And he was helping. He never gave up. And that should encourage us to know that God's there, even though we don't quite understand. Did Joseph understand what was he, what all this was about? He didn't even understand his dream. He just knew that he dreamed a dream. 
And all through the, the bad times, Joseph prospered because God was with him. And Joseph never gave up, but just kept trusting in God and made the best of every situation. No matter how bad the situation was, he always made the best of it. He didn't let it bring him down. He didn't get discouraged. And what I like most about this story is in verse 3. It says, His master, this would be Potter at the time, saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did prosper in his hand. Now think about that. The testimony he had trusting in the Lord that his master could see that. Now what I don't know for sure is obviously there was a lot of Hebrews there because they were slaves you know, build everything in Egypt. So they must have known something of the Hebrew God. And they knew Joseph was a Hebrew. So I'm assuming they went, oh, look, your God prospers you. And that's basically what this verse is saying. And he recognized that, and what he ended up doing? Putting him in charge of the whole house. But what I want you to understand is the people around him Unsafe people recognized that God was taking care of him. He never lost faith. You know, when I used to set up at the swap meet down in Daytona, I used to go in the morning, get there about 7, uh, stay there till 3 o'clock, and then I would break down and go down to Main Street where I set up now and stay there at a midnight set up. Uh, that's back when I could handle that. I can't physically do that anymore. But uh, anyhow, I would go to a swap meet. A guy named Paul uh, Jackson runs a swap meet. He lives in Maryland. Uh, he owns what is called Jam On Productions. Well, we got to know each other. He loved me. And the only reason I knew this is because one of his supervisors told me this. He says, Glenn, he says, Paul wants you here. He'll give you the red carpet treatment. Why? Because he knows that you love God and that if you're set up here, God will bless this event. That's what they told me. Now this was an unsafe person thinking that. Same thing's happening here with Potter. The people around Joseph saw some divine protection was in place with him. And they knew that God would bless. And finally, I want you to see this, that God is with us through thick and thin. Remember, Joseph spent uh, years in bad situations, and God was right there helping him every step of the way. Joseph never gave up on God. He ends up being the second most powerful person in all of Egypt. Think about that now. He didn't know that was going to happen. Now, he did interpret the dreams of Pharaoh, but God never gave him the interpretation of his dream. He had to trust God. Think about that. He had to trust. He had to have faith. Now what? God could have given him the interpretation. He could, oh, I'm going to end up in... But God didn't do that. He had to, by trust, just keep looking to God even though he was in jail or walking the desert as a slave, not knowing what his future was going to be like. And the key is, we get frustrated. I miss Bob Norton. <laughs> Norton Bob. He never got frustrated not knowing where his future led. He didn't know whether he was going to, where he's going to end up as a slave. But he kept trusting the Lord. And think about how God's plan always works towards us. And that's the part you've got to really trust on. God's going to work things out. We just don't know how. Well, God may have us go through sufferings to help somebody in the future. Oh, I always love, uh, the best illustration I can think of real quick is as a mechanic. Where I hired people at one time when I had my own shop. And I hired the guy, gave him some work, and he got really mad at me one day, the guy I had hired. He man, you, you don't know any of this stuff. Oh, wait, I said, wait a minute. Who do you think started this business? I can do everything you can do, and I can do anything on a car. 
And the moment he saw that, I, I talked to him about that, he became a different person. Because he thought I was just some guy up in, behind a desk at the top that I just hired people to do work for me and didn't know the mechanic side. The first thing I want you to, to remember is that God is with you every step of the way. I can't say that enough. I'm trying to ram it down your throat. And I know you're going to get sick of hearing it. But until you apply it and use it in your life, you're not going to experience what God has for each of you. Even though you don't know where it's heading. When, when we all are in God's will, He's going to take care of us even though through the hard times, no matter how long or how bad those times take. And when you have those days and nothing goes right, remember Joseph. That's all I can say is just think Joseph real quick in your mind when you're going through something like that. And then when you think Joseph, hopefully all this other stuff will enter your mind and encourage you. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. Now this is after his dad dies. And his brothers say, think that now that dad's dead, Joseph is going to take revenge on them for selling him into slavery. And this is what he responds to them. He says, he's talking to his brothers now. He says, but as for you, you thought it evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass it is this day to save much people alive. God meant it for good. But God didn't tell Joseph what was going on. He trusted him every step of the way. And God had a purpose for Joseph in his life. Which meant selling off the slavery, coming down Potter's house, and making it to Pharaoh. To where he interpreted. Think about this. If he never went to Potter's house, and never went to jail, to help the baker, and who, who was the other one? I forgot the other one now. The baker. Oh, the, uh, the wine tester. The wine tester. And uh, had he not did that, and he interpreted their dreams in prison, and he said, remember me when you get back out. Now, one of them ended up getting killed. Anyhow, because uh, the inter But the other guy, which I'm assuming, I I'm trying to remember who it was now. I didn't plan on saying this. But one of them, any anyhow, stayed and, and served. He was the one that brought up to Pharaoh, by the way, there's a guy in prison that interpret my dreams pro properly. You might want to listen to him. And that's how it came out. God's plan. He had to experience all these bad things to get where he was. Think about that. So what about us in our lives? What about the things we've went through? Don't look at them as negative. Look at it as a time of learning and to apply what you learn. Trust God. Everything, everything we go through is meant for the good to bring to pass God's will in our lives. Everything we go through, God's going to use that. Make the best of every situation just like Joseph did. Let's pray. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.